What's up crafters? It's Sabrina with Minecraft by Sabrina, where our crafts are anything but square. Today I'm going to share with you how to slice up an image in order to do a larger than map project. I'll be doing a 32 inch cupcake. I'm going to be doing this via Inkscape. This is the first time to my channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe. To import your image, you want to open a new document in Inkscape, drag and drop your image into the program, and then simply select OK on the import menu, leaving all defaults the same. Your image will then be embedded. To convert to an SVG, you want to first count how many colors your image has, and then go to the path menu and select trace bitmap. Under the trace bitmap window under multiple scans, you want to select colors, check smooth, uncheck stacked scans, check remove background, and the number of scans should be the number of colors you counted in your image. Select OK to convert, and once it's finished, you can close the trace bitmap window. Now you want to ungroup your SVG, so click on your image, and then select object and ungroup. This is going to isolate every layer, and then you can move them apart so you can see how each layer is an individual cut file. With the image as an SVG file, we can now begin to create the file. So I'm going to change my measurements from millimeters to inches. I'm going to change the height to 33. And I want to make sure that my lock is on so that everything stays proportionate when I'm sizing. I'm also going to use the zoom in and out feature so that I can see the entire project on the map. So a larger than map project is simply a project that's cut up into pieces and then assembled like a puzzle. There is a base layer where everything sits on top of, and this is the backmost layer, and then you have layers that sit on top of it. I also have a process that I call a squared, where all of my colored images that sit on top of the base will be scored onto my base, thus giving me a positioning markers. I'm not going to use the pink border, so I'm going to delete that border. And then I'm going to take my lower base, the black layer, and I'm going to duplicate that by using Control D. And then I'm just going to move that over so that I can work with it. Now we need to start slicing up our base. I'm going to press F4 on my keyboard to use the Insert Square tool. I'm going to click, drag, and release in order to make a square. I'm going to change the color so that I can see it a little bit better. And you want to make your square about half an inch smaller than whatever the size paper you're using. So if you're using a 12 by 12 paper, then you want to size the square to be 11.5 by 11.5. I like to use poster board paper where available because it's going to minimize how many cuts and how many seams I'm going to have. So after you created your square, you want to open the align menu by doing Control, Shift, and A. Then you want to select the base and the square by holding down the control button and clicking both of them, and then aligning them. I'm going to align left and bottom so that it sits right at the edge of the image. After you've aligned it, with control D, you want to duplicate that square and then cover the entire image. With a 12 by 12 sheet of paper, it will take five sheets of paper. If I use a standard sheet of paper, an 8.5 by 11, this is going to take 8 sheets of paper. And if I use the poster size paper using the full large mat, I can do 10 by 5 by 23 by 5, and that would take 4 sheets of paper. So depending on the material you're using is really going to depend on how many slices you need and how many seams are going to end up on your image. I'm going to now select all of my squares and group them by going Object and Group. Then I'm going to press the lower button or the end button on the keyboard and lower this layer to the bottom. Next I'm going to duplicate all the colored layers and I'm going to weld these layers together. This is going to be my score layer. So you're going to do Control, Shift and Plus or go to the Path menu and select Union. I'm going to align this directly over the black layer exactly where it needs to be positioned. And then I'm going to duplicate the group of squares. 
I'm going to press page down on the keyboard in order to lower it one level. Before we start slicing, it's very important that everything stays aligned or else when you cut it in Cricut, your puzzle pieces are not going to fit. The first thing we need to do is ungroup our squares by going to the object menu and selecting ungroup. Now in order to slice, you need one base for every square. I have five squares, so I need five bases. So I'm going to press Ctrl D on my keyboard and I'm going to press it four times so that I have five black bases, one per square. Then we're going to do an intersection. An intersection is a slice where it eliminates everything except where the two images intersect that. So you're going to hold down control and click on one base and one square and on your keyboard press control shift and the number eight. You can also go to the path menu and select intersection. This is going to then leave just where they meet at. You're going to repeat this until the entire base has been sliced. So you select your next base and your next square, shift control eight to intersect. Next base, next square, intersect. Next base, next square, intersect. Final base, final square, intersect. Now because all of my squares were pink, all of my final slices also are pink. The black layers disappear. So I'm going to just select everything and change my color from the color panel. Now you can see that each piece has been sliced individually. Now we're going to repeat this process with our score layer. Now this part is completely optional. You do not need to create the score layer, but I highly recommend it as it's going to make your assembly a lot easier. So we're going to do the same thing by ungrouping our squares and the object and ungroup menu. And then I'm going to control D to duplicate my blue layer four times in order to have one blue layer per one pink square. And then we're going to go ahead and do our intersections. So you're going to select one square and one base, control shift eight to slice. Next square, next base, intersection. Next square, next base, intersection. Square, base, intersection. Final square, final base, and intersection. Again, everything is pink. Doesn't matter in this case, this is going to be a score anyways. Now that my base and my score layers are all sliced up, I'm going to align them. I'm going to select all of my pink pieces and with the enable snapping feature on in the upper right corner, it's blue. I'm going to drag my pink layers onto my black layer. Because our enable snapping is on, you'll see it snap at certain points. You want it to snap right in the center when it says cusp node to cusp node. Then you can go ahead and release your project. I'm going to go ahead and select it all again and go to the object menu and group it together. Now our S scored, which is our score and slice layer has already been created. When you send this to the mat in Cricut Design Space, the pink layer is going to be set to score and the black layer is going to be set to cut. So when it cuts your black layer and scores your pink layer, that's going to leave you positioning markers to allow you to assemble and glue on your next layers. Now we need to start with our colored layers. All of these are going to go on top of that black base. So you need to select each one individually and review the size to determine if it needs to be sliced any further. So I can see that my red is a 4.4 by 3.5, so I don't need to slice it. My paper is 8.5 by 11. My yellow layer is 6.9 by 8.8, .8, .8, so that's also going to fit on a regular sheet of paper, and I don't need to slice that up either. 
My remaining three layers will all need to be sliced because they're larger than my sheet of paper. So I'm going to repeat our slicing process with each of these layers. Starting with the blue layer, I'm going to repeat the process by inserting a square, selecting both objects, and then aligning them to one of my corners. I'm going to duplicate that square as many times as needed in order to cover my project. So I have four squares that I need to slice. I'm going to move those items to the bottom by selecting them and pressing end on my keyboard. And then I'm going to duplicate my frosting as many times as needed to match my squares. So I have four squares, so I need to duplicate it three times in order to get four layers. Now we'll go ahead and repeat the slicing process by clicking on one square and one base and control shift eight to intersect. Next layer, next base, control shift eight. Next layer, next square, intersection. Final layer, final square, control shift eight to intersect. Everything is gray, so I'm gonna change the color and then you can see how each layer has been sliced. So that was a straightforward way by just creating squares and covering your entire image. I would strategically slice these layers to limit the seams that I create. Because this image already has some lines in it where it's going to cut out, I'm going to use those to my advantage. So I'm going to place my square in one of those slices and utilize that to just kind of separate my image. So I'm only going to use one square because I want to strategically cut this up. So I'm going to now hold both of my images and press control and forward slash or go to the path menu and select division. This is kind of like a knife. It's going to just cut the image where that square sits on top of it. So once it's created that division, it's going to separate your layer into multiple different pieces depending on what that layer is. So each piece has been separated just by dividing one square on it. And now you wanna take each of those pieces and you wanna measure each one to confirm that none of those need to be sliced additionally. I've assembled each one onto a 10.5 by eight square, so I know they do not need to be sliced any further. Moving on to the tan layer, it's 19 by three. Now I can see that I have three individual pieces that are just welded together. So before slicing, I'm going to actually separate this layer so that it's three separate pieces and that's going to save me the need to slice. So I'm going to select my layer and go to the path menu and select break apart. You can also press control shift K on your keyboard. This is going to then break each piece into individual pieces. And now I can see that each one on their own is going to fit on a sheet of paper. So I do not need to slice it at all. Now I'm gonna slice the final brown layer and I'm going to do this the straightforward way by just creating squares and covering my full image. I'm going to move those squares to the background and bring my base to the front. And then I'm going to duplicate that base four times in order to have one per square. Again, doing my slice process, I'm going to select one square, one base and intersection Next square, next base, control shift eight. Next square, next base, and continue intersecting until everything has been sliced. Again, everything has turned gray. I'm going to select it all and change my color to brown. Now you can see each piece has been sliced individually. Now that all layers have been sliced, your file is now complete and ready to be saved. Click File, Save As, and then give your project a name. I also include my size inside my title so that when I upload into Design Space, I remember what size this project is. You also want to make sure that your Save As type is as an Inkscape SVG file. With our image saved, we're gonna upload that into Design Space by clicking Upload on the left, 
upload in the middle, and then drag and drop your SVG file. Because it is an SVG, no cleanup is needed, so go ahead and name, tag, and then save your image. Click on the image and then select Insert Image. Once your image is in the Zion space, you want to go ahead and change the height. Mine was 32 inches. I'm actually going to make it 31 just for safe measures. Now I'm going to ungroup that image so that all my layers are separated. I'm going to now select and duplicate all of my base layers. This is going to include the solid base and the scoring base. Then I'm going to select the two pieces that match and select attach. So I should have one solid base and one score base piece and they should attach. You want to do this for each piece. So you should have five attachments. Repeat that, select your two pieces and attach. Once all your pieces have been attached, I'm going to select only my score layers and I'm going to change my line type from cut to score. Now that it's set to score, I'm going to go ahead and save my project. I'm going to hide my original layers in the back because I did not attach those, so those are not ready. And then I'm ready to go ahead and send this to the mat by clicking make it. So all of your layers are now going to appear on the mat and you can arrange them and move them as needed. If you notice your black layers are going to say that they are score and cut. Now while you don't see the score lines on this latest update in design space, your menu does indicate that it is going to score and cut. In iPad, I can see my score lines. So here you can see all the black layers have your cut path and your score path. So again, this is my method that I call S squared. It's going to score your images and then it's going to slice your images. And aside from that, then you have all of your regular colored layers. So you're going to go ahead and press continue and just follow the instructions on your machine and screen in order to cut your items. Now that my pieces have all been cut, I can see that my black layers have that score mark on them. Remember, that's our S squared layers. So that allows the positioning of your next layer to be marked right onto your project. So here you can see the outline of my bow that's scored into my background. And then with my colored layers of the bow, I'm able to just place them right on top of my score lines and it eliminates the guesswork of where these pieces have to go. My little cupcake section, I can now place my cupcake layer right on top of those score lines for exact positioning. You want to make sure that when you then assemble everything, you tape everything so close together that your seams are almost not noticeable. So here I just have it roughly kind of set in place so I can see that everything is going to kind of work together. I tape my base off from the background and then all my colored pieces just have double sided tape on the back. Everything is then taped and assembled and here is our final project. Here are a few other larger than matte projects I have created. These are about four and a half feet tall. Now your size is virtually unlimited as long as you put in the work and slice up each image. Projects are endless and these make great photo props. All right, folks, that's all I got for you today. I want to thank you for watching. If this was your first time to my channel, don't forget to like and subscribe so you can be notified the next time I bring you some content. If this was helpful, don't forget to share it with a fellow crafter friend and hashtag quarantine training.